so hi everyone uh, today we will try to understand what is temporal difference in reinforcement learning and how temporal difference uh, can be implemented using sarsa and q learning so there are three major concepts that we will be dealing with uh, so let's get started so i think in my previous video i have already covered about what are monte carlo methods and like what is every visit monte carlo and first visit monte carlo so like uh, I won't be covering that again, but just to give a brief. So if you remember, this was the example that I used in my previous video. So basically in Monte Carlo approaches, uh, even if you haven't seen the video, that's not a big deal. I'm just trying to uh, brief it what Monte Carlo does. So basically Monte Carlo helps us to estimate the value function. Value function is basically uh, the current state and the action taken uh, and hence the value for that particular, uh, this particular state and action pair. So given a state and action pair, what is the value uh, that we can get? So basically, uh, in case of Monte Carlo, we need to have a terminate state before updating. So uh, before updating the value function for all the states involved. So for example, if we started with A, with this step, we need to go through the entire episode. And eventually, once the episode gets terminated, then only value functions are uh, calculated, updated for, for all the states involved. Now, there can be two problems with this major thing. One is ki if we don't have a terminate state. Like for example, if you consider any 3D game, like for example, uh, in that case, uh, a running 3D game for a subway surfer, in that case, there won't be any terminate state coming in. So how to update value function for the action taken by the user, number one. Now it can be also the case that you have a very long episode, which involves thousands of steps. So waiting for uh, updating the value function after thousand steps, once the episode completes, it doesn't make sense, right? So what we try to do with using temporal difference is that uh, we are trying to update the value function for a given state as in when we have taken an action. So in case of uh, Monte Carlo, in my last video, I think uh, uh, if you can just have a brief around that, that would be great. So in case of Monte Carlo, we were uh, first going through the entire episode. Once the terminate is, uh, we get a terminate state, then we go and update A and B. Now in case of temporal difference, once we take an action, we update the value function for A. Here also we update the value function for A and then move ahead. Right. So we are trying to update the value function as on we move on. Uh, temporal difference can be taken as a combination of Monte Carlo plus dynamic programming. Uh, I won't be jump, jumping deep. I won't be going deep into that particular concept. Now, how temporal difference is able to estimate over the future uh, rewards. Basically, uh, if you see in this particular case, at this point, I really don't know ki how much I, uh, what, when the terminate state will have, whether I would be successful or fail. I just don't know it. So how to estimate the future reward because eventually the valuation, uh, the value function of A of a particular state that I'm coming would depend upon the end state, right? Now, if I haven't seen the end state yet, how I can estimate over the value function of a particular uh, action and state that I have considered right now. So uh, this is a particular algorithm that we would be following. Uh, let's understand this. Uh, assume that pi is the policy that we have. Policy is basically the approach that we are following for taking an action. Now it can be epsilon greedy. It can be greedy. Epsilon greedy means that we have a random value. Uh, we have a certain random value and depending upon that random value, either we are going with greedy approach or we are going with explore approach. So for example, uh, epsilon is uh, say set to be 0.5. So, uh, and we then generate a random value. So if the random value comes out to be 6, 0.6, then we are going with a uh, greedy approach. Else if the random value comes less than 0.5, then we are going with an explore approach. Explore means taking a random action. Now, uh, first of all, we take a uh, input policy. Then we initialize the value action function for every state. So all the states that are getting involved and all the actions that can be taken for that particular state. Uh, we would be having a value function for each of them that would initialize a zero. Now, uh, for number of epochs slash episodes for which we wish to train the system, we take the initial state of the system, assume it to be S. Now, for each state in the episode, we choose an action depending upon the policy pi. So, assume that uh, we have uh, five states and we started with state S0 and we took an action. Uh, assume that we can take four actions up, down, left, right. We took an action uh, depending upon the policy pi, say left. Now, we would be uh, as soon as I have taken the uh, action left over state S0, I would be updating the value function for a state S0 action left using this particular equation and then moving ahead. Now, what is this particular equation? Vs, Vs, alpha, r, uh, gamma, Vs, uh, uh, dash, minus Vs. So let's understand. So Vs is nothing but value function for state S. Alpha is a constant. R is the reward. Gamma is a discount factor and uh, V uh, S dash is the 
value function for the future state to which we are moving so now let's understand this so basically what we're trying to how we are updating the value function for state s0 when you have taken a left action is that we are considering the value of a function for state s0 at left plus alpha plus reward so what is the reward that i'm getting immediately so uh, it, it can be the case that you move to a next valid state so in that case you might have set some reward to one it is not a terminating state it's not the winning state so you are setting some reward assumed to be one plus discount factor discount factor is again a uh, trend now vs dash so value function s dash is basically the value function for the future state to which i'm moving on so for example if i take a left action on s0 and move to s1 so value state uh, uh, value s dash represents the value function for moving to state s1 from s0 right uh, after taking action i'm moving to s1 so minus vs that is the value function of the current state given the left action now you must be curious ki uh, value functions are not defined by just the state but also by the action right so value function is basically uh, the estimated uh, reward you can take it estimated reward that you might get on coming to that particular state and taking that particular action right but in this case i haven't mentioned uh, the action for the future state so how to uh, determine that so uh, there are two methods to do that sarsa state action reward state action so it is an on policy temporal difference learning just remember the term on policy where you follow the same policy pi for choosing actions in both the present state and the next state understand with an example assume this is my environment and i am at a block 900 and 900 900 is basically this point right as you can follow in my cursor now assume that in k i am following sarsa approach and i am considering epsilon greedy policy right now when i am considering epsilon greedy policy i can take a random action if the random value is generated below 0.5 as i take a greedy action now 0.5 is something that i am setting up but you can take the epsilon, set up epsilon as anything so i choose to move left uh, i am at currently this state i took uh, an action left on this particular state and i move to this one 700 900 coordinates and get a reward r now to update value function for state 900 900 this particular cell uh what function i would be using i would be using this value value function 900 900 comma left because this is the state and this is the value this is the action that i have taken is equals to value function 900 comma 900 comma left plus alpha reward is the reward that i am getting plus discount factor value function 700 comma 900 this is the future state that i am coming to comma up uh, how up is coming because as i told you i am following epsilon greedy policy so assume that next time uh, when i am choosing the action for the future state uh, i got a random uh, i got a epsilon less than 0.5 and i am going with a random action and the random action chosen is up now so as you can see that up is not the best approach to follow because there is a blocker here hence uh, it, you might be negatively rewarded for that minus value function 900 comma 900 comma left so here you can see that uh, how sarsa is implemented so uh, basically in temporal difference uh, if you see that this is the point that i wish to reach this is was my starting state 0 0 and this was my uh, final state that i wish to reach but now uh, and i am currently at this particular state 900 900 uh when i'm taking an action left so updating the value function for state uh, for state 900 900 comma left what i'm doing is that i'm using i am use, uh, following the particular equation that i've mentioned earlier where i'm using uh where i'm choosing the action for the current state using epsilon greedy and for the future state also i'm following the epsilon greedy approach only so when following epsilon greedy i got a left i i got an indication that i i should move to left and but when i'm went to the future state 700 comma 900 the best approach would might have been to move right again or move up down or move left uh, but in this case we got an up because it is following an epsilon greedy approach so in an epsilon greedy you can get a random value for the action as well which is getting represented in this and hence we are not taking the best possible action to be taken but a random action depending upon the epsilon greedy approach this is what sarsa does now the next is q learning so it is called as an off policy uh, temporal difference learning the only difference between sars and q learning is that we can have different policies for selecting the current state action and the future state action in case of sars we were following the same policy for selecting for present and uh, the next state but in case of q learning i can use a, a different approach in case of in choosing for the current state but in case of the next state i can choose another approach so let's see an example assume that i'm following epsilon greedy approach for uh, current state and greedy approach for the future state the policy that i am following again i am at that 900 comma 900 cell only uh, i took a action left 
and I came to 700 comma 9. Right. Alpha R plus uh, discount factor uh, factor 700 comma 9 comma right minus value function 900 comma 9 comma left. Now if you look at this, uh, we didn't get an up, we got a right. This is because assume that we have trained the model for some epochs. Now the model knows that key moving. Uh, if I am at this particular state, 700 comma uh, 900, I should take a right action to get the maximum reward, right? So as you're following epsilon greedy approach for uh, the current state, I took a left. But now I'm following a greedy approach for the future for estimating the rewards from the future state. So that is I am considering to move right. Uh, in case of Sarsa, we moved up because we were choosing a random action, and unfortunately we got up. Because there is a blocker now, we might be getting a negative reward. But in case of uh, Q off policy, uh, in case of Q learning, we are choosing the action right because it is yielding us a maximum reward. 